Hello friends and thank you for joining me here today. My name is Hille. I'm coming to you from Denmark on a ostensibly, <laughs> ostensibly a summer evening. I wanted to take a chance and uh, try filming a little bit out here this evening. Um, soon the sun is gonna move behind tr the trees in the background so I think it's gonna be okay. The wind might be rustling a little. I hope you can hear me. I've done a test and it sounded as if it was okay so let's just uh, dive right in. This is a knitting episode and um, not surprisingly I have some knitting content and I also have a quote and um, some comments on my previous episode. Let me just uh, tell you what's on the program. Two finished objects and a work in progress and a couple of acquisitions, two of which are yarns one of which is related to the work in progress, and then um, something else that I'd just like to share with you. Oh, and also a little bit of footage from a small fiber festival or knitting festival I went to um, at the end of April, I think actually right after my last episode with Lerge from Fiber Tales. And we had a fun day together. So just a little bit of footage uh, from that later in the program. I want to begin with a quote. The quote is something I read in a book by Dan Millman a million years ago, um, something about enlightenment, or, or it may have been another book. I read three of his books back then. He, was, uh, he had been an Olympic athlete, an American Olympian athlete, and then suddenly he'd sort of um, gone down the path of enlightenment, and I was all about that. Well, I am again. Um, and uh, he was quite wise and he incorporated a quote that I thought was by him at the time but I've later found out it was by Thomas F. Crumb. I don't know who that is but the quote is wise all the same and it's something that I've um, I think it's useful for many of us to be reminded of when we are confronted with change or anything in our lives that we're somehow not happy about something that didn't meet our expectations you know it could be disappointment in a knitted garment in many different things um, and when I bring up quotes here is because oftentimes they can relate to our knitting and most of the time if the quote is good enough of course it can relate to anything else in our lives so <laughs> without further ado let me let me say the quote it's about how instead of reacting uh, we can do something else because you know when when stuff happens we have a tendency to react or feel have a certain emotion that may not be to our best in our best interest and the quote goes instead of seeing the rug being pulled from under us we can learn to dance on a shifting carpet and i just i love that and it's so strange that i have to keep on reminding myself this because we don't remember um and I've just had a, an episode recently where I had to remind myself about this all over again. So I just, I think that's a beautiful comment. And um, there's that fluidity of movement that we can try to uh, bring into our lives and um, go with the flow, I guess you could call it. I try to sometimes talk about this in, uh, in the yoga relaxation part, especially. And every time I say that, I know I'm speaking to myself as well. I also just briefly want to mention, if you will allow me, uh, last time I mentioned the word awe and it was so interesting because I wondered afterwards if my talking about it here had enabled my readiness to experience awe because like one or two days later I was cycling to work and cycled past the local school and this little boy, eight years old or so, came running. Uh, on the sidewalk and um, suddenly this group of older girls, they were like 14, 15 year old girls, they were standing further down on the sidewalk and they saw him and it was this PE day and he was clearly running laps around the block. And then when they saw him, they formed a gate, you know, they stood on either side of the sidewalk sort of lacing their hands. So there are these uh, four or six girls standing there making kind of gate for him. And they went, yeah, come on, come on, come on. And when he saw them, he just went, you know, you could just tell that he started sprinting and he was so excited and they were just cheering him on and I'm cycling past going, oh my gosh, that, that's a, that was a moment of awe to me. Um, and I just, you know, I just thought that was lovely. And um, 
please forgive me for rambling on about this, but then there was um, a moment in just a brief moment on, on morning television where there was a, a woman in the studio who sang a song that I remember teaching to my students when I was a college teacher of English. And she was a soprano, a, a magnificent soprano, and she sang Molly Malone a song that I taught my students before we went on a trip to Ireland. And suddenly, you know, she triggered my whole sort of, I taught them that song. And then when we went to Ireland, we went and visited the oldest pub in Dublin. And um, we're sitting in a corner, there were 17 of us. So, you know, we took up some space and people would just sort of uh, begin to sing every now and then as they're wont to do in Irish pubs. And suddenly they began to sing Molly Malone. And we just went, here we go. And we sang all of us. And it was just, oh my God. And everybody just looked over at these Danish people singing along with Molly Malone and they were cheering and we were clapping. It was just a moment. And you know, when I when I heard that soprano singing it in a, in a version I certainly not heard in, in this soprano voice, it was just triggered all those beautiful old memories that I hadn't thought about in <laughs> decades, I'm tempted to say. So I think for me, that was also awe uh, and you know, you practically brings a tear to your eye and um, it's just uh, it's that was lovely anyway just wanted to share that it's get neither here nor there I wanted to also take a minute to say thank you for all the lovely comments that uh, many of you wrote to me last time um, especially since they were sort of uh, of the very encouraging kind and uh, the reason being that I had said uh, a couple of things in my last episode. By the way, if you don't want to uh, listen to this, feel free to uh, skip to where the knitting content proper begins. I will put that uh, on the screen when it begins. But I had talked about last time about how if I was to uh, send out or make other videos, I would really appreciate it if you didn't unsubscribe. And afterwards I thought that, that was such a ridiculous thing to say because it sounds as if I'm hustling, <laughs> you know, I, I'm all about not hustling, you know, things arise and things uh, peter out and that's, that's the way things are supposed to do. Um, but I didn't have the wherewithal to think that in the episode. Thankfully, many of you wrote comments along those lines like, hey, the people who find you um, and who are meant for you will stick around. I'm like, you're so wise. Thank you. That's exactly it. But anyway, I just wanted to... Uh, Thank you for for the comment that you wrote. And as luck would have it, I'm tempted to say, that's definitely an inverted commas. When I made a video um, about yoga philosophy, there was a small exodus away from my channel, which I probably should have uh, um, expected. And I think because of your comments, I was like, well, you know, go in peace, you know. Um, clearly this this is not for you and that's absolutely fine and I think letting go and going with the flow are sort of two sides of the same thing and anyway the the more people left the more grateful I felt to the people who stayed so I think often it's about mindset you know um, and we can so easily get caught up in what we're losing instead of seeing oh wow look at all what that we have one or two people felt the need to tell me you don't actually need to uh, hunt for likes don't be about that I'm like whoa <laughs> I'm not about that I think what I'm about is a sense of belonging being part of the group the tribe and I think the moment you you can't see this you see or you can't see on the on the number of people who are subscribed to my channel if if it falls a little I can see every single number because the YouTube studio allows you to see everything. It enables you to compare, how did you do last time? How does this video do? Not always uh, good for your mindset, I have to say. So I try to ignore a lot of that. I don't go into say, oh, you know, how can I best optimize? I don't care. Because um, it, it has to be sort of authentic. I think the problem is the idea of the slamming door, the idea of somebody leaving. I think it sends uh, a message to our amygdala. Oh my gosh, somebody's leaving your tribe. I think it's just, you know, how we're all biologically programmed to connect, to connect with others. So the minute something seems to threaten that, we can feel scared. And 
in that connection it's very important to sort of activate the part of us that can sort of distance ourselves and say you're not actually living in a tribe in a cave where somebody's leaving you and uh, you're now in danger you have to sort of rise above that and say it's okay you know you're fine look at all these other lovely people and by the way I never thought all these people would somehow show up here anyway I'm completely in awe of that uh, and very grateful so it's never been about the numbers I don't know I just I think many of us might uh, react that way and uh, yeah at the end of the day I was I'm so grateful that you folks are here so thank you so much for that and thank you for bearing with me on this long ramble I will now get to the knitting so let me talk about my first finished optic which is of course the sweater that I'm wearing it's the trellis sweater by Pia Tuntz also known as uh, Travel Miss Knits and 50 Fabulous the pattern came out on the 1st of June and I've knitted it in this yarn that I showed you last time called Fluffy from A Knitter's World and this is what I have left it's two strands of the Fluffy in the undyed uh, version or colorway and um, it's 42% baby alpaca, 35% silk, 13% fine merino and 10% yak and it's just as dreamy as I supposed and as I talked about last time um, I, as you will know if you've been here before, you'll know that I have sensitive skin. So uh, right here, this is actually directly on my skin because the t-shirt I have underneath goes down like this and it doesn't bother me the least. And that doesn't happen very often. So this is now definitely one of my new favorite yarns. Um, you can see the strand here is, uh, let me get it closer. You can see the strand here is, I would say thicker than silk mohair, but of course thin thinner than wool. So um, it's two strands together and it creates a really lovely fabric. Um, I will insert some footage of me earlier, I think maybe at the end of May, when the clematis on my uh, trellis looking uh, structure in the back of the garden uh, was in bloom. Um, and I have to say, I can, I can, I can reveal already now that this has become one of my most worn sweaters. I absolutely love it. Um, and several reasons why I love it. The fit is just, it's, um, it's a nice relaxed fit. Uh, I didn't make it as super oversized as the pattern tells you to do because I had, when I started this, I just made uh, a number of uh, pretty oversized sweaters and so I wanted it just this is not what I would say is oversized this is a relaxed fit at least on the body um, and I wanted something that would be sort of more all round that I wouldn't feel dressed up in if you know what I mean and I've worn this you know on so many occasions uh, going for an ice cream with my family visiting a friend layered over uh, right now I'm wearing white jeans I've worn it over um, a dress I've worn it with sort of more summery pants because it's a very sort of it's a light fabric um, so it's not too hot it would probably uh, belong to the category of what I call transitional knits you know perfect on a cool summer evening um, and also of course because of the color this undyed it's like a grayish beige I guess it's very sort of a like it almost has an earthy feel yet also airy I'm not sure if that makes any sense. You can perhaps tell more if I sort of... Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> and of course, on a practical level, the color goes with most of my wardrobe, so that's really nice. And I don't actually have anything in this color. And now I wonder why, because I really love it. I guess it's a cool um, gray beige, because I mostly uh, gravitate toward cool colors. Probably because I feel that that's what I look best in. And oh, I also feel really cozy in it, but without looking too sort of homey sweatshirty, which is pretty perfect for me. As I said, I didn't make it super oversized, but you can certainly do so. I think that would look really cool. Uh, I went down a needle size. It's pattern tells you to knit it on a six millimeter for, uh, let me just check, 15 stitches on and 30 rows on four inches or 10 centimeters. And um, 
I went down to 5.5 millimeter, I think, instead of six, because I didn't want the pattern or I didn't want the fabric to open. And also I didn't want the super oversized, but also I increased with 16 fewer stitches uh, on the body here. Oh, and the five, I, the 5.5 millimeters uh, US nine. Had the fabric looked fine with the six millimeter for me, I would have just done that and then uh, increased even less. Um, but for me, I felt the fabric was a little too sort of loose. You could, you would easily be able to motorcycle in the distance. You would easily be able to see what I was wearing, what I'll be wearing underneath. And I wanted it just slightly denser. Although this is by no means dense, it's very drapey. I made definitely also made fewer uh, decreases on the sleeves because I felt they were already pretty tight, and I'm I'm not really into tight sleeves. Um, and I, if I was to make it again, I would probably even make increases and then a balloon effect in here. I think that would look really pretty, especially if it was a little more oversized. I think I mentioned last time how I would have, would really love to make it in a, in a pastel color of this. Um, but uh, Bettina, who has Anita's World, of course has this, and this is the undyed colorway. So obviously any color that you over dye on this, it's going to become darker because it's not white so i had to make that connection you could only you would only be able to make pastels if you were to bleach this first and i imagine that that's maybe not a good process i have no idea um, but i could easily see myself uh, knit with this again i could imagine a cardigan a big slouchy cardigan in a double strand of this mm, yum and uh i also know that a lot of you bought the the yarn afterwards because she wrote and told me and I hope I hope you are really happy with it I can definitely recommend it and uh, as you can see it doesn't take a whole lot of yarn this is what I have left uh, from four skeins and maybe I should just mention that of course you can see that it's a round yoke there's some short rows in the back and then you move down here and you make some inc interesting increases here it's a pretty a uh, minimalist pattern, I think, which is probably typical of many Danish designers. But this is a little more minimalist than what I've tried so far. But it's still pretty simple. Um, but for this technique, the the whole trellis thing, um, I had to uh, I had to check what she was there a video or something. I forget. No, actually, I think this one made sense. It was the increases that I had to check, and it's not very difficult. And obviously, it's not a very big piece, and it just makes for a little bit of engagement up here. And then you zoom by pretty quickly here on a 5.5 millimeter or um, US 9. So it's a meditative, meditative, easy, um, gratifying knit, I find. And it definitely fills a hole in my wardrobe in terms of the color and um, the wearability of it. One thing I found out when I was knitting this sleeve, because it goes so fast, when you then use magic loop, which I did, you, if you if you enjoy the whole meditative process of knitting this bit, it's very unmeditative to have to sort of pull the cable all the time, and I I, I don't think I have uh, DPNs that are 5.5 millimeters. But even if I had, I don't really enjoy knitting with DPNs or double pointed needles either. So on my uh, two buy list is definitely small circulars. I just don't think I've seen any in Denmark. Probably they exist. But that's definitely on something I will need to get hold of because presumably it would be a little more sort of, you know, uh, meditative and quicker, frankly. Oh, maybe I should just say um, it comes in sizes from extra small to 4XL and with a circumference up here, bus circumference from 119 uh, centimeters. Mine is less, as mentioned, to 179 centimeters. So that's uh the, the largest size is pretty pretty large i would say and probably that's with a little bit of less ease since it's 4xl i don't know um typically there's for most designers i've heard uh here there's less ease uh in the larger sizes uh something that people debate but i'm not part of that debate so <laughs> Um, depending on how much you want. I mean, it's it's really easy to modify it to your own um, preference. 
Uh, I just uh, downsized it a little and you can easily make it bigger as well. Oh, the pattern also tells you to make a longer ribbing, but for me, um, that would have been mainly, I would have preferred that if there had been a balloon effect, but there wasn't. So I thought, well, let me just make a simple um, sleeve here. And as I said, I've worn it so much, I enjoy it a lot. And it's interesting because it was quite simple to make and the color is also <laughs> the definition of neutral, I would say. And um, as much as I love knitting complex things and being challenged, I find myself reaching for something like this uh, much more. So um, this has become definitely a staple sweater for me and I can really recommend the combination of the of the fluffy and um, either the trellis or something similar to this. Yeah, very, very uh, lovely and I'm very pleased with it. So my next finished object is Crystal by Hege Iser, which is this beautiful minty v-neck, not a very low v-neck I find. The yarn, as I mentioned last time, is by Sander Yarn Co. And it's this uh, gorgeous combination of Sunday morning DK in the color, I think, yeah, it's the color window shopping. It's this absolutely beautiful color mixed with their, um, their halo, their silk mohair in the color glass. And I think I mentioned last time that I thought it was a really springy color. And I, I think, yeah, of course it, it can be for spring. Uh, summer but actually I think what I was drawn to is the fact that it's um, it has this sort of glacial of course it's called glass but it has this sort of glacial icy cool minty vibe to it that I was really drawn to there's something about the color that reminds me of this uh, crystal that I just wanted to bring now of course I forget what it's called but if you take a look at this crystal uh, yeah I really love crystals <laughs> Um, and uh, I have this sitting on my uh, a little shelf that I have close to my bed I think it's called something it's not called celestial but something along those lines or at least it has celestial sort of angelic glacial mystical vibes to me and I'm all about getting vibes from colors from knits and I think probably I was thinking about that. The fact that this is called crystal is also <laughs> interesting to me. I wonder if I would have been as drawn to it if it had been called something like walking by the sea. And that's not too corny, but you know, I really like when when the name of a sweater or a yarn um, gives me sort of um, associations. I'd like I like to be uh, I like being enchanted if you know what I mean. So I don't want it to be too obvious. So crystal plus glass and the whole minty thing was just, yeah, to me, I really like the combination of the yarn with this pattern. The gauge is similar to the one I had before. It's 15 stitches on a 5.5 millimeter needle or US 9. And, oh my gosh, it's knitted bottom up. And it was the first time in 20 plus years that I've knitted something bottom up. And I have to say, now that I've tried knitting top down so much, I can without a doubt say that that's my preferred uh, way of knitting. This one caused quite a bit of uh, anxiety along the way because I just couldn't be sure that I would get the fit that I wanted. And the fit that I wanted was the one I'd seen on the model wearing an, an off-white version of this. And I don't think I've quite achieved that. The reason, well, a couple of reasons. One being that nowhere does it say what size she's wearing or how much ease she's got. I would have really liked that. I would like pattern to tell me the model in the photo is wearing a size so-and-so with so-and-so much ease. Because then you can tell, oh, okay, maybe there's more ease on her sweater than the body size she has. I think the model in the photo is probably a size extra small or small and I think she's probably wearing at least a medium if not a large uh, maybe even an extra large she's definitely wearing something that's bigger than this um, so I don't have as much positive ease as I would have liked 
I'm going to try to maybe wash and block it again and just maybe leave it hanging or stretch it out a little more um, so I can get a little more ease. And, and you may think I don't need that, but I, that, was the, that was the fit I was going for. I'm, I might still just stay with this. Um, but another reason uh, is that as I was knitting bottom up, I couldn't just, you know, once you're done up here, you can't add extra uh, length down here unless as somebody suggested you uh, start with a provisional cast on and I was like ah I wonder if that's gonna work because then I would need to uh, then I my only option then would be to make more ribbing unless I'd started um, where the lace began and then if I was to knit the other way around the stitches I think the lace pattern would look a little off and it just it felt too uncertain uh, to do that so I decided not to do that and as I think I showed you last time I swatched both flat knitting flat and in the round and hit gauge with uh, knitting in the round and um, I forget which one I hit gauge with now but I definitely altered I think I hit gauge when I knitted flat and then when I started knitting in the round it became looser and so um, down here, when I was knitting in the round, I had one needle. And then when I changed to knitting flat, I had one size needle on one end and a smaller on the other. And that made all the difference. So it's pretty even, and I'm really pleased with that. So that's you know my go-to um, tip when I when I tend to do that. But I the the, um, the pattern I'm that's on my needles now, I I don't knit more loosely uh, when I knit flat. Uh, so it depends on the yarn. So I have to definitely swatch every time. Um, so if you have that tendency, I would also, you know, swatch because the yarn can make all the difference. Also, it's on a smaller needle now. Maybe that's also a factor because then the difference is going to be uh, smaller. But one thing that um, I didn't I mean, I absolutely love this sweater and oh my gosh, let me just get close so you can see. Look at that. Look at that bind off or whatever you call it. Same on the, so this is um, an Italian bind off where you have four set up rows. And I was like, I'm just gonna do the two. I, I can't believe four. I mean, come on, get out of here. So I did the two and then I started binding off and I looked at the photo and I'm like, Ah, I get it. I want it to be so, somehow thicker or roll more. So I don't know if you can tell, but this rolls really nicely. And it's just this really nice um, sort of uh, finish. So, okay, <laughs> trust the pattern in that sense. So I definitely, I unraveled the bind off and I did the four setup rows and it made all the difference. Oh, maybe I should also say I used I had three skeins of the Sunday Morning DK and two of the Silk Mohair, and this is what I have left. And uh, that was, I, I actually have more left than I thought I would. Especially of, of this, I was like, whoa, this, uh, you know, um, there's a lot of yardage in this. And I was so afraid I wouldn't have enough. Also because I wouldn't, you know, where do you leave off? I could maybe do the ribbing on the sleeves without the Silk Mohair, but I'm used to being able to leave it out somewhere along the bottom if I run out. Um, so that made me a little nervous. And my overall issue is that they tell you how many pattern repeats to make before you split for sleeves or before you begin the increases. And that's fine if you hit the row gauge, which I almost never do. And I don't see why you couldn't just say, when you knit it this many centimeters or inches, split for sleeves or begin to make uh, increases. You know, I, I want the length because I think a lot of us don't necessarily hit row gauge and there's just no way, what are you gonna do if, if you don't do that? And then, oh, something else. Um, my This is my own fault, of course, or fault. I decided to, uh, the ribbing, I think tell, it tells you to make or to knit um, 10 centimeters of ribbing or four, in, four inches. And I thought that was a little much, so I only made seven centimeters or about three inches, which meant that would uh, I would have to do probably about one more pattern repeat. 
and then uh, since I didn't hit row gauge I had to make another one and I thought that was gonna give me a sweater that was maybe a little longer it did not and of course I could I couldn't really see that until I was up here then I took a really close look at the pattern or the photo uh, of this the sweater the version that I was initially drawn to and I could see that it was actually shorter than I, I had first anticipated or noticed and I don't usually like cropped sweaters so I was hmm and I thought well okay I have so many uh, as I said oversized sweaters and sweaters that reach somewhere you know further down so let me let me just go for a different fit for once um, and I think that's actually fine especially if I wear it with uh, something that's uh, high-waisted it looks nice if you tuck it in and I think there's also something to be said for a different fit I compared it to a couple of sweaters that I felt had a similar fit that are already in my closet and one of them was the snow crocus and I decided I didn't want it quite as um, oversized or boxy or um, relaxed fit and I compared it to uh, the other uh, sweater I have by Hilga Isa which is the C2 sweater and I thought yeah that's it's gonna be pretty close to that maybe slightly wider so I would definitely when you knit bottom up it's nice to have something to compare to to make sure that you know I, I laid it on top of my C2 sweater to see is this does this look right in terms of where I uh, begin to uh, increase to to stop for st uh, and separate for sleeves uh, because otherwise I just I would have no idea whether this was enough and I was afraid to trust the pattern because it only told me to start to increase after you made X number of repeats so I think I have two more pattern repeats on the body but one of them was because of the slightly shorter ripping and um, one or two more pattern repeats on the sleeves I forget and I had also definitely studied people's notes on Ravelry there aren't that many that was one of the reasons why I also felt drawn to it once I'd seen it I thought well not it's not a very it's not a hugely popular pattern maybe because it's bottom up I don't know or maybe it just hasn't you know been noticed all that much um, but a lot of people wrote that they had added uh, a pattern repeat either on the sleeves or on the body or both so I thought you know there was a tendency for that or maybe people wanted it a little bit longer or maybe like me they didn't hit row gauge oh something else about the the yarn that I have left it's so new to me still to to knit with uh, three skeins of this and two of this there's so much yardage in these skeins that I was continually uh, questioning do I have enough because I'm used to 50 gram skeins so these were just so you know I felt there were so there's just so much yarn here and um, it was a joy to knit with it's a little scratch up here but I haven't noticed it that bad it's not that bad even though I am not wearing an, anything under here and I was whoops, I was planning to wear uh, slightly higher um, uh, or t-shirts with slightly higher necks so I think I'm gonna be fine or maybe even a white shirt I think that would look nice and crisp and glacial <laughs> um, you can see my notes by the way uh, gosh I took extensive notes on this and did quite a lot of math uh, so this is what it typically looks like um, gosh yeah to remind myself and also wrote down what I did on one sleeve so I would make sure to do it exactly the same on the other. I did have to be uh, vigilant when I knitted the lace pattern because um, there are six, it's, uh, it's over six rows and every now and then I, there was a tendency for me to mix two rows up, I, maybe that's just me. So I made little sort of diagrams and made sure to check them off so I knew okay I had done that one, just, just to be safe. Oh, and something else. The sleeve is size 2, the body is size 1. Because I didn't want these very fitted sleeves that I'd seen some sleeves that I'd seen some people with. And of course, I just made sure that the armhole, of course, I needed that first, that um, that's where I added an extra pattern repeat to make sure that I had room for the number of stitches that would fit the second size. Because otherwise, it would be... Uh, it would be too tight and I, I don't really like that.
It comes only in four sizes, small, medium, large, and extra large. Um, so not an extremely size inclusive pattern, I'm afraid. I have to say, I also thought the pattern was not extremely clear and it makes a lot of assumptions. And I think a lot of people had commented on that on Ravelry. It's not difficult, uh, but it's it, it should not be your first sweater, I would say. If it's your first bottom up, um, if you're willing to do some math and uh, a little bit of trial and error, I think it'll be okay. But um, I do think there are some issues in the pattern. The, the short rows, for some reason, are wrap and turn. And that's fine for most American knitters. I've been used to German short rows, so I just did that instead. Um, it doesn't tell you how to do either of them anyway, or to do the wrap and turn. And it, to me, it wasn't exactly clear uh, where they wanted them, but... And there were little details where I think, if, if you're a ex very experienced knitter, it, it's, it's gonna be probably self-explanatory. I consider myself semi-experienced by now, and there were some moments where I'm like, what do they mean exactly? Uh, where it's just it's not exactly explained. But with a little bit of deduction and, and patience, you will get there. Um, uh, but you're not, your hands are not being held all that much, I have to say. And I know that about um, Isaiah patterns. I've looked at another pattern uh, by them and I already saw people's notes on Ravelry saying there's actually mistakes here and it's not explained, blah, blah, blah. So hmm, I wonder about that. Um, but it's probably also tradition. I think Isaiah, they've existed forever. Back when I knitted 20, 25 years ago, um, I knitted Helga Isaiah's mom's patterns, Mayena Isaiah a lot. And I never thought about it back then that they were this minimalist because that's that's the way all the patterns were. And that's the way I think most Danish knitters of a certain age have grown up. I think it's just more recently, the younger generations are used to more um, handheld patterns. So I think that's that's interesting. Um, it's, it's just the way it is. I just, just a brief note on that whole thing about the name. You know the glass and the crystal to me that's just you know it goes they go well together i was just thinking that there's there have been patterns i've seen patterns where i i look at the sweater and I think oh that's beautiful and then i look at a name and sometimes the name deters me i don't know why um but i was just thinking that uh other names that i really feel drawn to that some of them i've needed not all but um are names that that they have this sort of enchanting quality. For instance, the yarn I knitted the javelin shawl in, and the javelin, javelin as well as the name, I think is good, and Winterfell. And I also like names like uh, Eurus by Ego Knit. And I like many of Natasha Hornby's names because you can't quite place them. It's like, what, what does that even mean? That sounds mysterious or uh, mythological or, you know, something like that. And I. To me, that's something that I feel drawn to in a knit because then I can sort of embody part of that mystery. And um, well, there's just something about that. So I don't want it to be called uh, going for a walk or uh, love at first sight or something like that. I just, <laughs> that's not to say I haven't knitted stuff that are things that have that sort of title or that I won't again, but I just, I have noticed that I'm not only drawn to aesthetics, but also that language matters in this connection. But there you go, that's probably just me. Oh, also, I think uh, Aegunit, they have that a lot, but also Junko uh, Okamoto, Junko Okamoto, she has a lot of these mysterious names as well. And I like a lot of Midori Hirose's names as well. It's just some something that, you know, it appeals to your, the fantasist in you, <laughs> which is what I do anyway with my knitting. It, you know, enables me to, uh, embodies something else and something else that I think this crystal sweater and the trellis have in, in common is that I haven't seen obviously this one is so new I haven't seen them that much which means I haven't been satiated by lots and lots of images on either Ravelry or Instagram or on YouTube which means that it felt like I could personalize that experience and I think I've noticed that that's 
relatively important to me. That's not to say I'm not going to knit something like the ranunculus. I probably am. Um, so the bandwagon effect is one thing, but sometimes it's also um, how you can personalize it, individualize it, and I quite like that. And by the way, this is what I do to indicate um, the neck in a garment. I make a little bow with a string of yarn, unless it's obvious like here. Um, so that's that uh, for my two finished objects. Uh, it's been a while since I finished them because I've been busy and, uh, you know, done lots of things. I've spent quite a lot of time reading some books. Uh, because I have, I'm um, in two different reading groups, um, so that of course takes time. And also, I haven't been super into knitting when during the month of May it was really warm here, and it was warm sitting with wool on my lap, and I, I you know, I I just knitted less. Um, so it it you know it ebbs and flows, and I think that's okay. We can't be at least I can't be equally excited about any one thing all the time and I think that's okay sometimes it's the whole taking a break from something that will actually reignite your um, love of it so I think that's all right I'm, I haven't taken a break yet I've just not knitted as much as I did during the winter season which I imagine is pretty natural I have to say it's becoming a little chillier now because the sun has moved behind some clouds uh, but I'm thankful that I can still sit outside I hope the wind isn't too bad but I just really wanted to uh, you know grab the chance and sit outside because I know in a few months that's not going to be an option and I wanted to share um, my most recent cast on I'm only knitting on one thing right now which is sort of nice because it you know I haven't scattered my energy across a million projects sometimes I do that and I, it's fun. Uh, and other times I'm like, Oof, let me just focus on one thing. After I showed the fluffy in my last knitting episode, a lot of people went and bought it. And um, I, I was, I was very happy when Bettina wrote to me to tell me the, uh, the owner of a Knitter's World because I felt that it's nice to uh, to uh, support uh, an independent yarn dyer like her, a one woman business. Uh, for all I know, she's got uh, her husband helps her. I don't know, but she there, there's her. She's the one who dyes uh, the yarn and is behind this company. So she wrote to say thank you uh, for all these people who went and bought it. I'm like, you don't have to thank me, but I'm really pleased because I can definitely uh, recommend the yarn. Uh, and then she wrote, uh, would you like some uh, yarn for maybe a summer project? I would be happy to send it to you. I'm like. That's so kind. I, you know, I never expected anything like that. Um, but I had actually been eyeing uh, a, a summer project already last summer, and I was wondering what to cast on next, thinking that it would be obvious to make something summery. But I had been sort of hemming and hawing about which one it should be because, you know, I don't necessarily wear a whole lot of um, summer tees. They have to be of a certain. I don't know vibe um, but I'd seen this uh, t-shirt last summer and I thought I, sh I sent the pattern to her to so she could see and ask her would this be would I be able to knit this in your silk yarn in this uh, color called cherry blossom that I had oohed and odd over uh, quite a lot of times actually I had oohed and odd over that color in many of her bases so she sent me four skeins of this absolutely stunning mulberry silk. The light is disappearing behind the cloud, so I hope you will be able to see. But look at that. Oh my goodness. I mean, I don't know, it maybe looks a little more off-white to you, but it definitely is very pale pink and is a little variegated. And I just, it's so shiny. I was just, oh! swooning when I opened the package and it's so soft so silky she sent me that yarn and I have to say the pattern calls for silk or linen I'm sure you could do it with all kinds of summer yarns but it's a thinner silk um, so not quite this one hi Finnis hi hi do hi it's Felice. hi okay my cat just turned up Finnis come here come here. Okay, so my cat just turned up. 
he doesn't want that. Oops. So this is Findus. <laughs> okay. He's, he likes, when we're out in the garden and doing stuff, he likes to hang around us. So I, when he saw me sitting, he's like, ooh, he sprinted. He's like, I want to be part of this. Um, so anyway, I decided to cast on uh, for a kind of a t-shirt called Ample Tea by a Danish knitwear designer called Visa Knit. Actually, I forget what her first name is. Her name is Camilla. I wasn't sure. That there was a, I had a, an inkling that it might be Camilla. Camilla Visa, the name Visa Knit, and it's a t-shirt called Ample Knit that I thought is, I saw it last summer. I'm like, that is really classy, yet um, casual. Not casual, perhaps, but relaxed. And I thought it looked really neat and um, simple in the minimalist way, not simple, basic, if you know what I mean. So I've cast that on. You can't see very much so far. Um, this is the neckline. You can see here, uh, this is where the shoulders um, are so that you, you cast on the whole thing. Then I think I've already forgotten some of the details, but there are short rows in the back. And then you, uh, you begin to make these increases on every row. Um, and you can see, maybe you can see here that it's slightly variegated. So I'm going to get probably, or I'm going to definitely get a thicker fabric because this silk is a little thicker than the one used in the, in the, or recommended in the pattern. And also Bettina from Anita's World suggested that I don't wind it up on the, the thing. <laughs> What's it called? I forget what it's called. Uh, so this was a very meditative evening project, winding up two skeins by hand. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. This is, this is slow fashion and I, I quite like that. Uh, but uh, I, I hope that this is going to be uh, what I have in mind. You, just, you never know. Or as close to. Otherwise, I'm going to have to dance on that shifting carpet and go with the flow. But um, I was a little bit in doubt about the size because I've already, uh, as you can see, I've already separated uh, the front and the back here. So this is where the sleeve is going to end. And then it's going to slope a little over my shoulder and probably stop there. And then I sort of drape down from there. And I really like the fit of that. And then it's going to cinch in a little around my hips, I imagine. And since it's top down this time, I guess I can, um, what should I call it? Adjust that as I go. So it, it suggests a positive ease of about 15 to 30 centimeters. And it's knitted on a four millimeter and, or at least according to pattern, this mine is not. Because when I um, swatched with this, I got fewer stitches per centimeter or inch, which of course I never do because I tend to knit relatively tightly. But since this yarn is a little um, thicker, I don't know if you can tell the size of the stitches or the yarn here, but uh, that meant that it took up more space uh, per 10 centimeters. Hi, Findus. Hi. <laughs> so, um, so I went down a needle size or I went down to 3.5 millimeter, which is, what is that? Would that be a six? Probably, you yeah, a six. The gauge is 22 stitches times 29 rows. And of course it's all stockinette. Uh, but it's now, uh, for a while now, it's back and forth, as they say in Danish, which means knitting, to knit it flat. And then once uh, I've uh, made enough um, centimeters or enough of the armhole here, I'm going to join it in the round. And I think one of the things that I was worried about was that this armhole would be too big so that you could look underneath. Well, you're probably not going to do that a whole lot, so I'm not so worried about it. But also I thought, well, you could always uh, stop the increases sooner or stop, not increase. You could always stop that sooner. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to try to figure that out when, once I can try it a little. Um, let me see. The sizes range from uh, the smallest size is 112 centimeters and the biggest size is 150. Uh, so not entirely uh, size inclusive, um, but I think it's a few years old. Um, and 
I imagine she is somebody who might be persuaded to make bigger sizes since that has become an issue or, or a consideration, a concern in, in recently. Um, but um, as you can see, I haven't, I haven't gotten all that far and that's actually not because I haven't knitted on it a long time, but because these are, to me, it's, I know it's not exactly a toothpick knit, but it's pretty damn close. Uh, if you ask me to me these are this is as close to a toothpick as I'm gonna get unless it's ripping you know 3.5 I don't knit often on 3.5 I have to say uh, but I'm enjoying it it's very slippery uh, there was one point where uh, since there's you do something uh, towards the end on every road to make a nice edge and suddenly I think did I do that wrong I had to sort of unravel and put the stitches back on the needle and I almost couldn't they would just slip off and I'm like <gasps> if I have to do that again I have to sort of knit backwards uh, because I can't uh, you know pull out the whole cable and and hope to put them back on the needle I've also wondered since this is a variegated yarn if I should um, uh, skein up the other two skeins and um, or cake up the other two skeins or whatever and and uh, alternate I'm not sure it matters that much when you have two strands, um, but I don't want there to be a stripe, certainly not on the front, so I might do that. So I was very grateful to Bettina for this, a completely unnecessary and unexpected, uh, and um, I'm just so grateful that I could uh, get behind this yarn and uh, share my appreciation of it here. Another acquisition that I have is like, I don't actually need more yarn. But a while back, there was an update from uh, Honor Och Eir. Honor Och Eir, I'm not sure how you say it. Nutiden, Nutiden, as we say in Danish. Uh, and there was just this one colorway that I felt childishly drawn to. So clearly, I'm in a pink period right now. Um, and when she showed it, I'm like, oh, wow, you know. So I just thought, no, I'm not, I'm not going to get up at, at five o'clock to get that. You know, if there's any left, there's, you know, there's stuff left. So I went and looked at it a little later and they still had it. And I, I just couldn't help myself. So this is um, called Kronblad or Kronblad, which is like, huh, oh yeah. It's one of these, uh, the, 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 the big leaves underneath, I guess they, they carry the whole thing, I think. The light is waning. Can light wane? Or is that just the moon? I hope the light isn't disappearing too much here. Um, anyway, I just thought it looked so candy floss tempting. And at the same time, muted and dusty and uh, subtle. And I don't actually even know if I can wear this because what happened last time when I knit it with Newton in actually a rose color, but darker, is that I started developing a rash. Um, so I don't know if it's gonna happen this time, but it was really cheap, I have to say. Um, so if, if all else fails, I'll give it to one of my daughters. I have one or two ideas about what to make with it, but then I have a million ideas all the time, about 10% of them, if that come to fruition. So I think I'll share more about uh, what I might make with it when I get around to that. Um, then I wanted to share uh, my last acquisition, which is something I've never owned at all. And I wanna really thank uh, Olga from Thread and Maple for giving me this absolutely generous gift. One or two caveats. First, I just want to show it to you unused. It's a needle binder from a Canadian, another woman-owned company called Thread and Maple. And it's, oh my goodness, I can't get over how beautiful this is. Um, it's this very luxurious uh, leather needle binder that uh, Olga asked me if I would like and uh, if I would share it on the channel and before I show you this in detail I want to say that I've been contacted by many different people over the past x number of months you know would I like to show this on the channel would I like to show that and I've said no pretty systematically 
mostly because I thought, well, I'm not about that. I'm not about promotion. I'm about sharing and creativity and connection and all that. Uh, and also I thought it's, it's you know, it's, um, I don't want to feel beholden to somebody and show products on a channel that has not, if it's got nothing to do with knitting, even if I might like that pillowcase or that hair product or whatever, I just, I, I you know, my integrity would be, be not to do that. And so I thought, you know, there are so few products where I really could get behind the product and this, I have to say, this is one of them. So I hope you um, will see it as the sharing of and appreciation of the this uh, product that it, it truly is and I want to just show you this right now in its I'm tempted to say raw form in its as yet unused shape because I'm gonna take a long time to sit and organize it but it has all these <laughs> amazing little sort of pages where you can organize your needles and then you can open these little pockets where you can um, I think these are probably for all the different cables and then there's a little zipper where you can put extra things in and I have to take I've already decided that two days from now I'm gonna sit down and just I've set aside the whole day for this I imagine it's gonna be uh, almost a little ASMR vibe kind of session um, and you can get this and you can get different kinds of pages. I was really in doubt, you know, because I've never had anything this luxurious and this sort of uh, detail for my knitting needles and my knitting tools. So it was like, whoa, I, I have no idea what I need. Olga asked me, what do you think? I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I don't know. Um, but it's really unique and it's such a high quality. I can't even believe it. I'm going to throw in some extra clips, I think probably once I've put needles in also in some better light but this is the dark brown or the chocolate colored version which I thought I don't know I thought that suited me best and um, I think this is actually the medium-sized binder there's maybe an even bigger size um, because I thought I, I don't need an extra large and then there's this little to go thing I mean hello look at this there's a little um, zipper with some stitch markers in and then there's a it's a magnet closure with a little uh pair of scissors and two needles and i also want to say that um i would never i would never have accepted this if i couldn't totally get behind it and their company and also i think <laughs> i don't i don't have a patron I don't have a membership I don't have anything like that so I figured that this as a gift for me hurts no one and may in fact uh, promote uh, a product I can completely get behind and it's not gonna happen very often on this channel because I'm, I'm not about that as I said and I don't necessarily need to own more stuff unless it's something where I'm like ooh, this this is um, this is next level. <laughs> this is me leveling up and uh, I would rather have fewer really nice objects uh, these days. So thank you so much, Olga. Uh, a completely sweet uh, woman. I've had some really lovely exchanges with her. Uh, so um, I hope you'll go and check out their uh, products. Absolutely beautiful. And I will get back to you once I've filled it with all my stuff, my knitting needles. And uh, I'm going to definitely take my time with that, put on the kettle and get all cozy, the right ambient music, and then just take my time with that because it deserves it. Um, and there's also, by the way, I really appreciate that. There's a little, oh, it's a beautiful, you get the whole box. It's really beautiful. And then there's a little bag with um, the, the stuff that you leather sell. Um, and a little cloth so you can um, take good care of it uh, which I definitely plan on I was so nervous to even open it I went and washed my fingers and dried them a million times because you just don't want to get something like this dirty or greasy or anything like that and it comes with this requisite little uh, bag so it's a really luxurious um, product that I absolutely already love stay tuned on that Oh, and I love that they came with these little bong bongs or whatever you call them that are 
Canadian maple leaf. Thread and maple, of course. Can I just show you the cat? <laughs> Hi. The light is disappearing here. One more thing I just wanted to say is that a, a couple of people have uh, given me some patterns or donated me patterns. Thank you so much. That's so sweet of you. I can't promise to uh, knit them because um, there are so many things I want to knit, but I really do appreciate it. It's such a nice gesture. And I also want to say I appreciate you watching and taking the time to uh, hang out with me here. And um, don't mind me and all my babbling on. Um, I think it's because I, I know that a lot of you have, those of you who have written and or even just liked, it feels like a friendly, friendly little gesture, which means I tend to sort of feel, okay, let me just open my heart to you. So um, yeah, that's uh, I think the indication in the channel title, Danish Musings, there will be musings. Um, and I hope I hope that's all right. Mainly yarn related ones and knitting related ones. An ambulance or police siren in the distance. Well, there will be the odd siren because I live on the outskirts of a city with 200,000 people. So it's not just idyllic uh, roses and cats. There's also police sirens and motorcycles, but there you go. Thank you so much for your patience. I appreciate it. And um, I'm not sure when I'm going to be podcasting again because uh, now comes summer and I'm going to go on a hiking trip to uh, further down south in Europe. Um, I'll get back to you on that. Probably a lot of you will be on vacation as well. So there tends to be a little more, uh, I don't know, less routine filled um maybe more time for knitting but it depends on the temperature right now surely i i shouldn't even be knitting some something summery because it's it's cool in denmark i'm definitely feeling a little chillier now suddenly this is not too uh too hot but it's exactly right for this kind of weather thank you so much for watching and for um your patience with me and i look forward to seeing you again and Please do share with me what you're knitting if you are comfortable with that. Um, any comments, questions, anything um, that you'd like to share, feel free. I always enjoy reading your comments and thank you so much for being here. Have a lovely summer. me to give you a little tour of the thread and maple needle binder so you can see it slightly more up close on the front here you have the logo embossed onto a clasp that is magnetic and here I've just um, temporarily chosen to clasp this thing on this is where I check the size of the needles and my gauge. I have also thought
thought about putting it in here so it can just sort of sit. This is the first page where I have the smaller needles from I think about a three millimeter to four and a half. And here I have barber cords, a little pocket that snaps. On the next page, I have larger needles from five millimeter up to, I think six, and then five and a half in between. And in this pocket, I have cables and it comes with, the pockets come with little stickers. So you can write here what size the cables are. So this is for instance, 40 centimeters, 60, 80 centimeters and 100. And then there's a little pocket that I haven't put anything in yet. Next page, larger needles, six and a half millimeter or seven up to 10. Not needles I've used all that often so far. And in here I have some cable needles and some cable stoppers. On the next page, there's a nice uh, pocket up here with a zipper. You could put whatever you want in here, maybe a measuring tape, a pair of scissors. I haven't used it yet. And here I have room for more cables, um, 120 centimeters, 150, and then more stickers, and then room for a few more cables. And at the very back, I have some DPNs. I have room for one more here. I haven't decided which one. So four, four and a half millimeter, four and three and a half millimeter. So imagine that you were going traveling with this. What you could do is then open the clasp on the back here, the clasps, and take that out. And then you have this uh, neat little kind of traveling package, I guess, traveling binder. And then you can close it using the snaps so that you have this nice little travel companion here where you might add your little to-go package or travel companion. Also where the logo is embossed here with a, another magnetic clasp. Every little detail is catered to the leather is just gorgeous. I probably can't tell really close, but it's just really nice. Um, matte chocolate colored. It comes in another color. It comes in like a cognac color as well, which is a warmer brandy color, obviously. Both really beautiful. So yeah. That's the thread and maple needle binder. And to go.